just wanted to bring a little tropical ocean to you today. So have you ever rescued an animal? Or have you ever wanted to rescue an animal but you didn't know how? I love animals, and I was making sculptures about endangered species and the way that humans have this tendency to conquer the earth. It's like we don't always consider how everything we do really affects other living things. And I want to rescue corals. They're incredibly beautiful animals, and for me that's enough reason to want to save them. But in addition to beauty, they provide us with more than 30% of marine species. They make habitat for more than 30% of marine species. We share similar immunity genes, so we can learn a lot about our health from them. And they protect our shores. And I mean, everyone here, you experienced Sandy last year, and you know about those extreme storm surges and those terrible floods. So we need shore protection. And here it's oyster reefs, which are also endangered, but they do all the water cleaning and slowing down the waves. But similarly, in coastal tropical regions, the corals prevent the beaches from washing away, and actually from the whole island from washing away. So we need them, but they take a very long time to grow. This is a large table coral, and it took a long time to grow. Each of those finger-like projections is made up of thousands of coral animals, little polyps with a plant algae, a colorful algae living within it to provide most of its food. And so they have this very harmonious, sensitive relationship and then the coral builds a reef by excreting a hard calcium exoskeleton. So if you see the coral up close, all the surface is living tender tissue, but below that are these layers and layers of hard calcareous mineral stone. So it took such a long time, and maybe some of you heard, I just heard they found a black coral, scientists discovered a black coral in Hawaii that's 4,265 years old. That's so old. And most living reefs are five to 10,000 years old. So it takes so long to build and grow, but it can all be destroyed in an instant with dynamite fishing and diseases and pollution and just destructive human behaviors. Not always intentional, but they can happen. And this coral got way too hot. Oceans, more and more, they're having these heat waves. And so it kicks out its colorful algae partner, which is why they call it bleaching, and it starts to starve. Okay, so all of this is horrible, and as I said before, I want to rescue corals, but I didn't know how. And then I learned that you could use electricity through seawater to speed up their recovery and give them a jump start. So it's kind of like you plant a tree after a clear cut in the forest, you can transplant a coral after a bomb blast in the ocean. And it was an architect, Wolf Hilberts, who invented this mineral accretion process, and he teamed up with a scientist, Dr. Tom Garreau, so it really was art and science working from the environment, and I finally felt like I could stop talking about these environmental problems with my sculptures, and I could do something to heal. So the way it works is you run electrified, you run low volt direct current through seawater, and the limestone minerals that are abundant in the ocean begin to build up onto the metal. And then the corals or the oysters can cement to that, and they can grow faster and they can survive increased temperatures that normally kill them. And also with ocean, <coughs> excuse me, also with ocean acidification, which some of you probably know about, but I'm gonna give you like a quick analogy with tooth decay. If you have a really acidic mouth, you might have more cavities, but then those of us who have an alkaline mouth tend to have like strong teeth, but a lot of tartar and minerals building up. So corals like would wanna grow in my mouth because it's alkaline and they're, is more and more acidity in the ocean because of carbon pollution. And so this process is actually giving them free skeletons so they can use their energy for reproduction and other activities. And if you put like a sink a ship or a bunch of tires or a subway car in the ocean, it probably will become some form of marine life habitat. But this mineral accretion process, these electrified reefs, are actually helping the corals to adapt, like it's providing them a real life support during these shifting and confusing environmental factors that, you know, we don't know all the solutions, but this is one, one process that's really trying to focus on a solution. And this is, when I went to Bali in 2004, we, we made this metal structure, and on the right you can see samples of like growth, it's very hard stony rock, and this is a video, as you can see. Do I hit it twice? I do. So this is a video of after six years of growing. 
And it's really beautiful. You see all the fish come back. It's a story of transformation because this particular area had been dynamited and cyanided for fish. And then they decided, the local community and international community decided that they would rebuild and it's become an award-winning ecotourism destination. There's over 80 different structures. And even the villagers like, that were dynamiting now have structures for just sustainable fishing. And most of the native species of corals are all planted there. And it's really beautiful. Can I click? And this is such a beautiful, this is nine or 10 years growth, same location. And I think it's like best in show aquatic topiary. It's just so gorgeous. And it was something like this underneath when it was first put in. I just want to give you a quick time lapse. This is like pre-installation. This is three months growth. This is three years. And this is the backside because corals don't grow symmetrically. And I wanted you to see it's kind of, it is like a topiary. The corals really collaborate with you and become. So people often ask me, like, what size? Any size? It can be any size, any shape or size, the sculptures. And it's fun to watch in certain countries. You know, lots of people get together to put them out there. This was Made and Komong just swimming it out. It looks like they're going to do their laundry, but we're using that basket to pick up homeless coral fragments off the seafloor to plant. <coughs> and as far as the electrical power supply, it could be, you know, wave, tidal, wind, solar, on the grid, off the grid. It's such a low trickle charge of current that you can actually hold on to it while it's electrified. And here, Made is just using a piece of wire. So this is all mild steel, and within a few hours, it will be coated with a thin coat of limestone, and then it won't rust in the harsh ocean environment. And this is just a stocking stuffer coral that we discovered at a Maker Faire one time, which makes me want to take you guys on a really quick, wacky tangent. My computer keeps telling me that its memory's full, so I've been trying to archive stuff, and some old design concepts keep passing by. And I think she would definitely need some cement legs, too, or she's going to look bad. And then I, I like the tub. I think that's fun. But when I came upon these, this conical village, it struck me, these are, these are underwater waffle cones. <laughs> and corals bleach in the heat wave, ice cream melts in a heat wave. 90% of humans, well, not 90% of humans, but maybe 90%. I think 90% of Americans eat ice cream, and 100% of the world needs healthy oceans. So I reached out to the dairy industry to see maybe when they have National Ice Cream Day, we could do some kind of collaboration or some way to reach more people about the decline of corals. Because sometimes you end up talking to people who already know, like you know, World Ocean Day, you're talking to a bunch of other ocean lovers. So how can you reach people who just don't know about it to care yet? And so if you guys have any ideas, I'm always open to suggestions and new ways of reaching people. And after this, we'll be doing a workshop. Um, it's called Reef Reformed. It's a sculptural installation, so we can kind of enact and visualize the actual making of a reef. And there'll be a small demo of a bio-rock setup, so you can see the electrical and the chemistry a little bit better. Sadly, I don't have any living corals today, but you'll still get the idea. And to bring you back to the beginning, you know, I want to rescue corals. And making homes for them really makes me happy and feel hopeful. And I want to end with you guys on a positive note. Whoa. And this is a, a one-inch scale model of a meow, trapped. This is a one-inch scale model of this DNA-inspired sculpture that will soon be submerged in Mexico. And then we're going to plant it with coral. And really exciting, we are going to be adding live streaming web cameras so that even if you never get to snorkel there, you'll be able to, like wherever you are anywhere in the world, you'll be able to watch it grow. Thank you.